What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Toby D, Faith Football Fans. Well, as you know, the schedules came out not too long ago on Thursday night, prime time. You know how they do. Um, finally got some football talking time coming in now. So I know a lot of you are excited. You know, looked at the schedule backwards and forward, uh, trying to find out the many different things in there that you see that have stood out to you. Uh, now, you know, I'm a Falcons fan, but I'm choosing this time not to talk about the Falcons schedule just yet. Uh, I'm actually going to wait to talk about that. And instead, I'm going to flip it and talk about another team that is in our division. Um, the team that seems like every year uh, since I can remember, you got experts falling in love with all the time and always saying that this team is on the rise. And yes, if you guess the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you are exactly right. Uh, I don't know what seems to make experts um, become enamored with this team, um, but for some reason, they always find a way to fall in love with them. I guess they figure um, this team has to get on the rise at some point and they look at their roster. But what I'm thinking is to myself, is this roster really what they think it is? Or is it a mirage? And at this point, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm thinking it's a mirage. I have not seen yet this team rise to the occasion that many experts and, and their fans alike have predicted they would do. Now, the closest they came was 2016. Um, they went 9-7. and seven. All right, they beat some teams that I thought they was actually going to get beaten by, Kansas City being one of them, Seattle being the other one, uh, and a few other teams in that mix. And they lost against some teams that basically handed them the game um, that they should have beaten, i.e. the Raiders in an overtime thriller. But I'm looking at this schedule that they got coming up. And a lot of people are predicting that they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, they made some great acquisitions in the offseason, uh, i.e. Deshaun Jackson, um, just to name one of the guys, and Chris Baker, uh, a guy I was actually interested in as a Falcons fan uh, from the Washington Redskins who chose not to re-sign him, um, a 6'2 defensive end slash defensive tackle that Mike Smith has picked up to join uh, his line of uh, array of pass rushers over there. Um, but I'm looking at this schedule, and I was listening to a gentleman. Um, he's very hyped, and he predicted that they could go 10-6, and six and they could make the playoffs. And congratulations to the Bucks, by the way. You guys, um, you are on this year's edition of Hard Knocks on HBO. Uh, I may try to catch that just to see what's going on and what Mr. Dirk Cutter's doing over there as a head coach, uh, him and Mike Smith. But I wasn't going to really talk about your schedule, but I think due to the fact that we had some of your coaches that are over there, specifically Dirk Cutter and Mike Smith as our coaches over here as the Atlanta Falcons, I have to say something. Now, I could be wrong about everything that I'm going to say, and it all could fly back in my face as the season starts and ends as the results. But from a logical standpoint, I'm looking at this schedule. There is one concern that I have with you all based on personal experience as an Atlanta Falcons fan. Um, now, many of you on YouTube, you talk about us Falcons, the fans, the team, we don't have a good roster. We don't have this. And a lot of you thought that we didn't have that roster last year to go 11-5, and five, let alone make the Super Bowl, but we did. And one of the reasons that we made the Super Bowl was because we had a talented offensive line. Now, did that mean that offensive line provided less sacks on Matt Ryan? No, they didn't because Matt Ryan took his 37 sacks. 
uh, and 109 hits. But you got to understand with the type of offense and explosive offense we play, those types of things are going to happen. Um, I.e., watch the Green Bay Packers. The year they, they went to the Super Bowl and they got a better result than one, um, they allowed Mr. Aaron Rodgers to get hit a lot and he got sacked a lot. But they were still an explosive, talented offensive line and team. That is the difference. And my concern with looking at this schedule for you guys, you don't have a talented offensive line. And I'm looking and I'm looking at the teams defensively that you are about to get ready to play this season. And do you know what all these teams have in common? How diverse they are on their defensive fronts. And I'm reading an article right now saying that you are going to try your right guard, Allen Market, out at center. Now, that might be all good and dandy. But let's be real here. You are about to see a lot of fronts mixing up their fronts. That you're going to expect Allen Market to be able to recognize the stunts, the blitz packages, who the Mike linebacker is. And all of that stuff, I don't see it. Joe Holly already was bad. We had him, y'all. We know. Now, he was a subpar center at best. Subpar. But if he was still really any good, do you think Dan Quinn would have cut him? Come on now, ask yourself that question. Dan Quinn cut him. Now, provided he came off an injury, but he's gone. And we took our chances putting Mike Persons up there. And you saw how that worked out. Not as good. So I'm just saying, let me, let, let's look at some of these guys who, who, who love to mix their fronts up in the defense. Vikings. Now, you know good and well, if you know anything about Mike Zimmer, He's one of the best defensive gurus out there. Now, I know he had a little issue with his defense not obeying his, his calls and making their own calls in some games because they felt like they could get to the playoffs without his leadership. But you see how that worked out. They didn't make it. You got to play a powerful defensive front with the, in the New York Giants minus Jonathan Hankins by the way, who signed with the uh, Indianapolis Colts. But, guys, there's still a strong front up there, i.e. Jason Pierre-Paul, who just re-signed with them. You got the New England Patriots that you got to play. Okay, we five. And if anybody mixes their fronts up, probably more than anyone, and plays different defensive schemes up front, than probably any team in the NFL is the New England Patriots. Now, mind you, you don't have a center yet, and you're trying somebody out. And another reminder, this is not a good offensive line class. So good luck with that, trying to find your center in this draft at 19, unless you are going to cross-train somebody at it. We'll see. You got to play the Buffalo Bills who just signed McDermott, who was the former defensive coordinator of the Carolina Panthers, whom you know is going to blitz the mess out of you and mix his fronts up on you. You don't have a center. You got to play the Panthers. Now, they promoted their secondary coach up, but you know the scheme is not going to change much. He's probably going to tweak some things to his liking, but they're going to mix their fronts up, and you still don't have a center. Now, I wouldn't worry about the Saints. That's a toss-up for you. You can possibly win that. But despite how bad you think the Jets are, they still have great defensive pieces over there, fellas and ladies. And you know Todd Balls loves to mix his fronts up as well.
and you don't have a center. Now, you're going to be playing against the Atlanta Falcons come week 12 after your week 11 by week. Now, you could win that game against the Falcons, but I don't see it happening. And the reason why is because I believe our roster is better than yours. And after this third draft under Dan Quinn, we're probably going to be miles and miles apart from you after this season. You got to play the Green Bay Packers. And despite what defense you saw us beat down now twice, in the same season, I don't believe you have the capabilities to stop Aaron Rodgers defensively. One, because I've seen Aaron Rodgers tear up Mike Smith's defenses. Remember, he was our coach. And defensive influence he had, even when we had Brian Van Gorder or Mike Nolan, Mike Smith still had defensive influence on his team, and he has it on yours right now. He don't even really know what kind of defense he is. And that's probably going to play a huge role in y'all taking a step back on your defense this season. You got to play the Lions' tough defensive front with Terrell Austin still as the defensive coordinator, a guy who was once highly touted as being a head coach in the NFL. Then you got to come back and play the Falcons again week 15. I don't see that as a win. Now, at this point in time, your line is probably so horrible that you probably will not be able to withstand anything getting down to the stretch where you have to play the last three teams in your division in order to even get a chance to sniff the playoffs. Now, I'm just going to leave it at that. But, guys, look at this thing and be serious now. Who do you have up front as your general to recognize defensive calls, stunts, blitzes, twists? I don't see anybody. So if you're trying to convince me that you're going to go 10-6 on this schedule, which looks much more difficult than the 2016 schedule y'all had, especially with the different types of defensive schemes that you are about to face this season, starting off the rip, I'm sorry. I'm just not convinced of that. Now, if you had Alex Mack over there like we have Alex Mack, I might could be convinced you can go 9-7. I personally don't even see y'all making the playoffs if you don't do something about that line. And since you chose to pay $11 million to a 31-year-old wide receiver who don't even stay healthy, guys, we tried that. You didn't pay attention? 2013 and 14, we had all the skilled players you can name. Tony Gonzalez, Roddy White, Harry Douglas, Julio Jones. Couldn't none of them get the ball because we didn't have an offensive line that was talented enough to at least hold up on certain play calls to get them the ball. And you thinking that just because you went out and got Deshaun Jackson to hopefully hide the fact that you don't have a talented offensive line, it's going to make you 10 and 6 or 11 and 5. I believe, my friends, you are seriously fooling yourself and are in denial truly about your team. Now, you can say whatever you want to say about my Atlanta Falcons, but I guarantee you our roster up and down is miles and miles better than yours. And it's still getting better. Even in this third draft, we ain't even drafted yet. But I'm still confident we're going to have an even better third draft than we had the first two drafts under Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitro. I'm just saying. I'm going to leave it right there. Again, faith football fans, peace. I'm going to like, share, subscribe. Say what you want. I don't care. It's all good. Peace.